Well, good evening, everyone, and welcome to tonight's Real Estate Investor webinar. Uh, my name is Dennis Wong, and tonight I'll be uh, taking you through tonight's content, which will be focusing about which kind of investment property is right for you. So thank you so much for uh, taking an hour of your time tonight, and whether you're a first-time investor or perhaps a, a seasoned one, hopefully you're going to uh, learn something new, and tonight's content will help you invest more successfully, and uh, obviously help you be able to achieve your property investing goals. Now, um, your microphones have deliberately been muted just because of the volume of people that we do um, have on tonight. Obviously, it makes it difficult to obviously uh, be able to speak live. So if you do have any questions at all, uh, feel free to type that into the questions section on that on your GoToWebinar control panel, and I'll have plenty of time to uh, answer any questions that you have at the end of tonight's content. Uh, the session tonight will go for about an hour. Um, to further, I guess, um, enhance your experience or make sure that you're going to get the best out of tonight's webinar, just make sure that you've got your volume turned up. Um, and if you're running any uh, programs in the background, uh, downloads, perhaps you've got Dropbox that's updating or anything like that, I recommend that you just pause or turn that off just for the next hour or so uh, because obviously with less data going out or, or coming in, you're going to have faster internet and you're going to get better quality audio. So like I said, my name's uh, Dennis Wong. I've, I've been at Real Estate Investor for uh, three years now, um, and, but I've been investing myself for um, over 10 years. I've got uh, personal experience in uh, renovating a couple of properties. I've got some cash flow properties um, as well. So um, before we do start, just a, a bit of a general advice disclaimer, just wanted to obviously uh, make you aware that uh, the information that's presented uh, tonight is really just an overview only. Obviously, I don't understand your personal objectives, your goals, your financial situation. Um, so uh, before you obviously uh, make any decisions or um, engage in any uh, purchases that recommend that you do, engage in your financial advisor or your accountant. So for those that uh, perhaps uh, aren't too sure who we are and you've just taken up a free membership with us just to get access to some of our data, uh, I mean, we've, we've been around for 10 years. Uh, we, Real Estate Investor initially was a magazine. Um, I guess we essentially help investors build um, and manage their property portfolios. So it's all about investing um, success, being able to invest successfully um, and be able to make the right purchases that, that you know, align with your, your strategy and your goals. So to date, we have over 2,800 current uh, paying members that uh, utilize our products and services. We do have a mix of personal users, whether they be mum and dad investors, full-time investors. Uh, we do have brokers, buyers, agents, and accountants who also take advantage of our, our tools, our data to, uh, to help uh, with their investing. Uh, we do have over 250,000 people currently utilizing our free membership. Um, that gives you access to market information, calculators, uh, infographs, and, and a lot of updates as well. Um, sorry, just uh, double checking that. I've got a couple of questions coming through, but just double checking that it's not having any issues with quali sound quality, but they're not. So, um, and look, we, we are a public listed company. So REV is our, uh, our code. We do have a very strong and pr focused uh, board with a lot of uh, property experience. Uh, we do have Simon Baker, who, who is the former CEO of realestate.com.au. And we've got the current CEO of Domain, Anthony Catalano, also on our board. Now, we don't do this all on our own. Uh, we do partner with other companies who are lead in their respective uh, industries. And then we do partner with people like uh, Builder Builder, uh, APM Price Finder. We provide a lot of data to your investment property magazine. Uh, Washington Brown, for those that uh, are looking at depreciation reports, uh, might be a good opportunity to have a look at that if, if coming into the end of financial year, if you haven't uh, already got a report and you, if you've recently purchased uh, investment property. And we also partner with people or companies like Zero. Great accounting platform. We integrate that into our uh, product, uh, which essentially helps you to manage your portfolio um, and allows it uh, you to save a lot of time and potentially money uh, when it comes to tax time. So before I get started, I guess just to give you an idea on the in the Australian property investing landscape, I mean, really, we have three different types of uh, property investment in, in Australia. 
and you know we've got those that have one investment property and usually um, you know they'll uh, it's a negatively geared property they'll they'll hold on to that uh, till till retirement they'll sell that off use the proceeds to essentially pay off their uh, their PPR or, or their home that they live in and at retirement they'll have a fully paid off property no debt um, but unfortunately they don't have any uh, retirement income uh, coming in uh, to I guess you know uh, supplement what would have been their the salary. Now we then have those in the two to four property group and usually these are people that are uh, earning uh, high income uh, and again they'll be negatively geared when it comes to uh, retirement they may have four properties they'll sell off two that have had some great equity and capital growth to pay off the other two properties and so they'll end up with um, some passive income or minimum retirement income coming in from in terms of rent from those two properties which are which are fully paid off then we have those that are in the five plus property group so these investors are all about strategy and numbers they plan um, well into the future in terms of where they want to be what's what is it they want to get out of investing in property they have a self-funding portfolio and really they, their portfolio can be bringing in anywhere between 100000 to $250,000 in passive income when it comes to retirement. So again, they, they could, you know, during the, uh, the, the, the lifetime, they, they could end up with eight, nine, ten properties but sell off four or five to pay off the debt on the five that they decide to keep. Now, if we look at those numbers in terms of percentages, 73% are in that one property group and only 2% actually make it into that five plus property group. So, you know, for those that are invest that only end up with one investment property, that, that could be because of a number of reasons, whether it be because they've paid too much for a property, they didn't do enough research, and obviously overpaying for a property can can hinder and prevent you from being able to make an, your next purchase within a short period of time. If you overpay, then obviously the value of your property could drop or stay stagnant for a number of years. So there's no possibility to be able to tap into any surplus equity to be able to buy your next property. And again, if it's a negatively geared property, your service it affects your serviceability. And again, and obviously with um, with how APRA is now tightening on lending, they're, they're going to be very very important factors. So I thought that just being just to set the platform, give you an idea of perhaps where you are and what you potentially need to do to be able to get to that five plus property group or that two to four group if that's where you're heading. So I thought I might just ask a, a poll. We've got a couple of polls just tonight, just to you know get 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 some participation. It gives me an idea of where you're at in terms of your property investing cycle. So I'm just going to launch a poll on screen. So if you can just click on screen your answer, you know how many properties do you currently own? You know, perhaps you're just starting out, you've got zero properties and you're just starting to, you know, get some education, learn, get as much as you can before you, you start the process. Perhaps you've just got your, your own home and you're now looking at your first investment or, or maybe you're in that small percentage of the population where you're in that five plus property group. So I'll just keep that open for a couple of seconds. We've got over 60% that have voted, so thank you so much. And I'll share it with the audience as well. I obviously won't reveal who you are and what you, what you uh, indicated, but just to give you an overall picture of uh, the kind of uh, investor audience that we have on tonight. So I'll just stop that now. So thank you very much. And look, no surprise. And I'll click share. And we can see that we've got 20% that have uh, zero properties. So welcome along. Hopefully you're gonna get a lot out of tonight's, uh, tonight's webinar. We've got 24% with one. We've got the majority of the audience with two to four properties. So Congratulations, guys. So I noticed there's a few names that uh, look familiar. Um, um, you know, you guys are already members of Real Estate Investor, so hopefully those tools um, and our services have helped you to get to help you build your portfolio further. And and no surprise, we've only got eight percent in that five plus property group. So I thought just yeah, just 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 run that poll. It's just interesting to see, and also it just gives you comfort as well that you're not alone. You know, there are other people that are in your same situation, and and obviously you know you know there are things that you can do to help reduce your risk and and help you become more successful um, as as you as you invest. All right, so I'm just going to hide that. Let's get back into it. So where do you start? You know, that's that's you know for for a large investment, this is going to be a very very important. Um, decision that you make and and you know you've obviously come got to the point where you've decided that you want to invest in property or real estate 
Um, and perhaps you're looking at, um, you know, you've, you've already considered shares and, and, and whatever else that's out there, and you've decided that you know property is going to be going to be the the thing for you. And obviously, with technology now and the availability of data, there is a lot of information out there in the market, and sometimes there's conflicting information as well. You know, you hear news reports. There's magazines telling you that this suburb is doing well, whereas the other one is saying you shouldn't invest there. Um, you know, the real estate agents are telling you everything is good that they're, that they're selling. Um, so this is where a real estate investor can can help you because you know we've been doing this for a very very long time. We've got the experience. We've got contacts to be able to allow you to focus uh, on areas that that actually meet your strategy and meet your your buying criteria. Now we provide a lot of free resources and there's a lot of free members out there listening tonight. So take advantage of those. You can access you know, a lot of free content such as webinars that we run on a weekly, monthly basis that you can access um, on our blog. It's completely free, educational that you can access at any, at any time. Choosing a strategy. So this is really, really important and planning is really important because if you don't have a plan, then you're planning to fail. And I'm sure a lot of you have, have heard that before. And, you know, there's a lot of people out there that will just pick a strategy because it's the flavor of the month. You know, there's a lot of renovation shows on, you know, it looks like it's a great idea. You can make, you know, large profits within a short period of time, but it may not actually be the best strategy for you. And, you know, it's all about then, you know, um, finding out exactly where you are, what position you're in, and then working out what strategy is going to suit. Because, you know, there's different strategies you know, there's, there's renovations, which I, which I mentioned, you can subdivide, there's cash flow, positive properties, there's capital growth, uh, maybe development. You know, every strategy is not going to suit everyone. Everyone has, are, is in different circumstances, everyone has different experience. And again, using the renovation example, you know, you, 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 you want to do the renovations yourself, but it may take a little bit longer than paying a professional. And so you need to then weigh up what is the cost of doing it yourself where it may take you two, three months longer. And a lot of people don't consider, okay, it's going to cost me less in labor, it's going to cost me potentially less in, um, in materials, but you know, you don't think about, all oh, right, well, it's going to take you three months longer, but, you know, how much more is that in interest repayments? How much is that going to cost you in lost rent? Insurance. So there's things like that, or even um, the, you know, the cost of repairing your, your work. You know, you get the professionals out there to do it. So, you know, experience is going to play a very important part in forming your know, strategy. Uh, and where do you want to be in 10 years? You know, it, it, that strategy is good. Different strategies will influence the types of properties that you should purchase, uh, which will obviously uh, dictate where you want to be in 10 years or where it can lead you in 10 years, 20 years time. You know, some examples, so if, you know, if your goal or your plan is to create passive income to potentially replace your 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 day-to-day -day salary, then the positive income properties is going to be a great way for you to start. Uh, but however, you know, perhaps you don't have great serviceability, you know, you don't have good cash flow, you've got a couple of negatively geared properties, you know, you're in that two to four property group. Um, so you need to look at building cash equity. So if, it's, if you're looking at investing just short term, then that's where renovations or subdivisions um, or strata titling might be might be more suitable. But if you're looking long term, then maybe you just need to look at investing in, in, in properties that's going to give you that long term reduced risk growth over the period that you're going to hold that property. And it really, like I said, it's all it all depends on what you're trying to achieve. You know, you start at your goal and then you work backwards and you fill in the gaps and, and you can then work from there what what strategy and what types of properties. Uh, are going to be the right fit for, for you. So look, where to purchase can then be the next hardest part of your, your process. You know, again, with all the information that's available, people telling you, you know, you should go invest here or you see, um, you know, reports that uh, this suburb is booming. You know, this is where we give you a lot of data that you can then make more informed decisions and, and non-emotional decisions on. And so we provided our members with unlimited access to our summer performance reports. Now we do update these on a monthly basis. Uh, for those that are already accessing it, um, you'll notice that on the first day of every month, uh, we'll update these. They're all, you can download them in PDF. We've got over 35 different reports within five different report packs. Um, not only can they help you identify which locations to target, but also which suburbs to avoid. And that's a very, very important thing as well because uh, you don't want to buy in an area that's perhaps uh, going into a trough or 
you know, it's uh, losing value because that can really hinder your your investing uh, path. Um, and and you know, investing in your own neighbourhood or you know in your backyard, whilst it's tempting because you know the area, uh, you've already got property there, it, it's rarely the best place to invest. And you know you don't want to put all your eggs in one basket because if that particular market drops, and when I say market, I mean you know that suburb or that specific area drops in value, and you and all the properties are in that that suburb, then that your whole portfolio will then will then decrease. So here's an example of a suburb report that we provide. It's the highest rental yield suburb report. We show you the top 200 highest yielding um, suburbs at the first. Uh, day of each month and we'll actually even tell you the specific type of property, the median listing price and what the weekly median rent is and how that translates into, into rental yield. So you know by the time it hits you know you know in the top 10 it's probably too late, you've probably missed the boat but if you want to understand the ripple effect um, on how um, uh, values or, or demand in, in areas uh, flow then this could be a good opportunity for you to look at the suburbs next to these suburbs. Because as a suburb obviously becomes too expensive, but you know, there's good amenities, good facilities, good transportation, and access available, then people will, will look obviously naturally look look next door. Capital growth will follow rental growth, and here's another report that you can have a look at. This is the top 200 fastest rental growth suburbs. So which ones are moving really quickly right now? So you know it's easy when when a suburb becomes high. Um, desirable, that it's easier for a tenant that's renting to move from one suburb to another by simply changing their, their rental uh, tenancy or rental agreement. Obviously to, to buy it's not as easy because obviously you need a deposit, you need to go through the legal process, due diligence, all of that sort of thing. But what you'll see, find out is that as more renters move to an area, then there's less supply. The current owners of those properties will be able to increase their rents because of the less supply and increased demand rental yield increases and then investors start to catch on. Then investors start to look, they start inquiring about these properties, real estate agents start then moving and contacting people, there's a lot of demand and that's what then drives price prices up and, and what increases capital growth. So a great report to, to also refer to um, to help you get started. Property hotspots, so like I said, with all the information that you have available, you probably notice on you know, Channel 7, Channel 9, and then news reports from time to time that they'll, they'll do a, a report on what suburbs are tracking, but by the time it hits the news, it, it's probably already too late. You know, it's, it's already hit the, the peak of the market or there's already, it's already become too expensive. So it's all about you know, getting access to data and, 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 and keeping your, your, your finger on the pulse, seeing where, what's happening, where, where, is, where are, the, are the number of transactions moving um, rapidly um, or increasing at a rapid rate. And look, even even if they, you know, if a suburb's hot, it might not be the right suburb for your, your type of strategy. Um, you know, if it's close to, obviously, suburbs like um, within a 10, 15 kilometre radius of Melbourne or Sydney where there's great capital growth, if you're looking for rental yield, you're unlikely going to get good rent that close to the city because it's so expensive to buy in there. Uh, where is that area in its market cycle? Is it hit its peak? Is it on its way down? Is it in a, you know, understanding the market is going to be important as well based on the type of strategy that you're looking at. Um, and what types of properties are you trying to acquire within that market? Again, different properties will perform differently in different suburbs. My first investment property, I purchased a townhouse in the wrong area. Um, or sorry, I, bought the, I purchased the wrong uh, type of property in the great area. So again, that's just based off lack of research and, and, and knowledge, um, and that's all. And that affected, and that will affect obviously um, your ability or capacity to be able to then move again to, to be able to move on to your next your next purchase. I thought I'd just give you an idea in terms of median house prices over the last 30, 40 years. Um, you know, 1973, obviously the one in Darwin there, data only uh, went back to 1986. So just just take that um, into consideration. But if you look at the median house prices for across all your capital cities, every single one has increased. So, and down the bottom, we've just got an average weekly wage amount as well. Um, obviously, this is just an average, um, but it just gives you an idea that over a long period of time, uh, property prices will increase. And with a commodity-like property, where there's always going to be demand for living, that, that's always going to be the case. Now, keeping that in mind, 
if we have a look at this graph here, this is a great graph actually. When most people forecast capital growth, they think of it like a as a line, like that yellow line there. It's like a linear line. They think capital growth is a is a is a is a constant um, increase that's steady, doesn't change. But in reality, it actually is a is a curve like a snake there in blue, where it goes through peaks, it goes through troughs, and if you look at that over a long period of time, if you're investing. It, it will always go back up at some particular point in time. Um, so it's just just important to keep that in mind that if you're investing long term, that uh, you know you don't panic. And you know I've seen a lot of investors where they've you know they purchased a property at the peak um, of the market because they've seen a report that that suburb is is really really hot. It's in high demand. They buy it at a peak and then it starts to decline. It slows down. They 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 they, they panic a little bit. Hits the trough. They panic more and then they sell. But if they just hold out in the long term, eventually property prices will increase again. And for those that already access our tools, you, you know, when you run a suburb fly report, you'll see that. You'll see the median price will, will stay flat, it'll increase, it'll decrease, it'll flatten out again. But over the long term, it's going to increase. For those that are looking at short-term investing, where you're perhaps you're looking at renovating or subdividing, again, then understanding the, the property cycle is going to be much it's going to be more important for you because you really need to understand then where, where you're buying it at and then perhaps where you're at what point in the cycle that you're then selling. Because if you're going to be buying when it's just hitting the peak and then you, you, you spend three, six months renovating and then it's in the trough, you then may obviously find it difficult to, to sell. So setting achievable property investment goals, very, very important. And hopefully, you know, you've got an idea of what your actual goal is. And I'm sure a lot of you have already heard what SMART goals are. So it's really important that your goals are specific, um, that you can measure them as well. I always find it really helpful that if you, you, know, you write down your goals, like a checklist, and you tick them off as you go. Make sure they're achievable as well. And, and more importantly, are they realistic? You know, if you've got huge amounts of credit card debt, you've got a car loan, uh, you don't have much, you know, you've got a couple of negatively geared properties, then, you know, you really need to be realistic in terms of what you can do in what time frame. So time is obviously going to be an important factor as well. So hopefully if you are watching this uh, this webinar, then, you know, your goal does involve property investing. So if not, then perhaps you are, you're on, you are uh, tuned into the wrong webinar tonight. But, you know, just a couple of questions just to think about is, you know, all right, if you've got a goal or you've got a plan. So, you know, how do you plan to achieve this goal? Have you thought about that? Uh, what do you need to do to be able to get to the next step? You know, you've got your big your big picture, but what do you need to do this year? What do you need to do next year to be able to get there? Is it reasonable to expect you can complete that goal? Do you have the time? You know, perhaps uh, you know out there you're, you're working full time. You really have you know only the weekends or you know late at night to to, to do research, or perhaps you you know you've got a young family. It makes it even more difficult uh, to do research with a you know with a crying baby or, or young kids. Uh, and do you have the know-how? Do you have the experience to to do what you want to do in terms of strategy or or, or doing the research? So just some helpful tips just to help you set goals. So perhaps you know, perhaps you already set some goals. These could be a couple of things you can you can think about that might help you that you can re help you refine. Or help you, or for those that are in that zero property group, you're just starting out. You know, start at the end. Where do you actually want to get to? What is your goal? You know, do you want to have 10 investment properties at the end? Do you want to have $100,000 in passive income with no uh, no debt on any of those properties? You know, start at the end and work backwards and identify where you are now. What assets do you have? What properties do you have right now? What is your salary? If you're investing with a partner, you know, what are, what are their goals? Do they align with your goals as well? You need to be on the same you know on the same page. Um, you know, you're going to think about things like if your partner's going to go on maternity leave, you're going to start a family, all those things that you need to, you need to take into consideration. Um, and, you know, what are the steps to do that? And, and, and your goals should um, be comprised of smaller goals. You know, each year you may need to do certain things to be, there, be able to allow you to then move on to the next, the next step. And like I said, write them out. I find it much more easier to accomplish or, or, or to finish a task or a goal if I, if I write them down. Um, and believe it or not, the, the number one reason why most people actually fail and, and some of the investors that I've, you know, spoken to over two the years is that they just don't start. You know, that's the last step. You, you've got your goals, you've got your plans in place, you, you've got your finance approved, but you just need to start. Um, you know, how many times have you, you know, you, you've been ready and, 
and you, you don't do anything, six months go by, 12 months go by, you've looked at a lot of properties, you then look back and go, oh, if I just bought that property, I would have been $30,000 better off in equity now and, and, and you know, $200 a week better in cash flow in my pocket. So what are some of the common investing challenges? So one, which I've already mentioned a couple of times is you don't have the time. You might be working full time, just too tired after work to, to do anything. You, perhaps you don't have the knowledge or the confidence. You're just starting out um, in the property game and you, you don't know, um, there's just too much information um, available. Uh, or you just can't find the right investment property. You've just been looking for so long, you've been missing out on deals. Um, they, they go on the contract by the time you get there, you know, you just, you just, you just can't finish that last step in acquiring that property or you're just not sure what to buy. So this just brings us to our, to our next poll, just to get an idea, I mean, I've got an idea on, on the, the types of investors that we're at, uh, that we've got online tonight, but what's your biggest challenge? And again, I'm just going to launch that on screen and I'll share it with the audience as well. So again, you know, um, don't be, you know, don't be shy. I'm sure there's a lot of people uh, else out there that's that's going through the same challenges you are. I mean, for me, it was obviously doing the research and identifying what I should buy when I first started out. Obviously, getting finance is now becoming a bigger issue with uh, lenders tightening and, and, and wanting big, um, bigger deposits and uh, and the like. But let's just get an idea on, 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 on you know, what you tonight are, are going through. So I'll just keep that open for a couple more seconds. So I've got just over 50% that have voted. All right, and I'll close that off in three seconds. Fantastic. All right, thank you so much for your participation. So I'll just share that with the audience. So no surprise, um, identifying what you should buy because you don't want to get it wrong. 45% uh, followed by 26% where they said everything, uh, all of the above, uh, getting finance, doing the research, and then a small percentage of the time it takes. So thank you very much, guys. All right. So what I'm going to do now is just go through a couple of different property types that you can potentially invest in and, and what are some of the benefits of that and, and the differences between them. So, you know, house and land packages or houses, you know, why them? So obviously buying a, you know, a house and land package at the moment, um, there's a huge savings on or potential huge savings on stamp duty. Now that's going to vary uh, in each state. Uh, so, you know, for example, at the moment in Queensland, um, the, the, the state government, if you make a purchase uh, under $750,000, they're providing a one-off uh, rebate payment of $20,000. Uh, I believe in Victoria, they're looking at abolishing stamp duty all, uh, altogether if you're a first home buyer. So that's another thing too for those uh, uh, that are looking for their first home to, to live in, not from an investment point of view though that not only uh, if you're buying a, you know, a new house and land package, you actually have the potential to get the first home buyer's grant um, and also save on stamp duty too, which is you know, significant amounts of, of, of cash. Uh, obviously with the house and land package, you can choose from a range of floor plans. Uh, it's a little bit different to existing houses obviously where it's fixed. You, you do have the potential to, to pick uh, from, from, from a number of different options. It's freehold title. Uh, low deposits required. So usually if you're buying a house and land package that's not built yet uh, or it's in the process of building, they generally only require a 10% deposit. So if it's not being uh, completed uh, for, 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 for a while, maybe a year um, even, it does give you some time to save up some extra cash as well. Uh, there is the potential for in instant equity. So, you know, if you can get in um, at, in the first stage of a new build, you do have the opportunity to um, get instant equity gains or capital growth at the time of completion, uh, because hopefully over the, the time it's taken it for a property to build, there, there should have been a lot of activity in that area uh, for existing property and new property, and obviously the value is increasing while whilst you're waiting for your property to be built. And during that time, you've had no expenses go out, you've really only just put in a, a deposit. So it's important that obviously that you buy in the right, uh, the, in the right area. Uh, all fixtures, uh, features and fittings will be modern, they'll be brand new. Um, so over, obviously um, as an investor then, when you, uh, uh, from a, a, a property management point of view or maintenance point of view, your costs are gonna be lower. You're not gonna have to be spending money, you know, hearing from your real estate agent that the, uh, uh, shower head needs repairing or the stove needs fixing, lights need fixing because everything should be brand new and your cost, cost will be lower. 
and then there's going to be obviously higher depreciation deductions. So your after-tax cash flow, or when it comes to tax time, you're going to get a lot of um, a lot more money uh, back from your depreciation benefits. So just to give you an example, here's a house and land package, just an example of what you would usually see. Here's a property out at Clyde North in Victoria. Um, it's Clyde North, if you're not familiar, it's about 45 k's uh, southeast of Melbourne CBD. It's actually a very fast growing region. Um, the population in 2016 was about 1,300 people. And at the moment, there's a forecast that that population will uh, grow to about 18,000 people. Uh, by 2041. So, you know, you'll get a, you know, there's your floor plan there. Um, you'll also usually get, you know, the, the land price, the build price, your total package. Um, this particular example here, you know, you, you'll be getting about 4.2% in, in rental yield. So townhouses and apartments. So why look at townhouses and apartments? So again, you probably heard a lot on the news and, um, and reports about oversupply and there's a lot of, you know, um, property prices going down for apartments. It's not um, the case for every apartment and townhouse that's out there in the market. So again, um, you know, one of some of the benefits is it's it's a generally it's a lower entry price point than a house. So if you don't have a big budget, you still want to get into the investment market. You you do have the opportunity to get into a townhouse or an apartment. Uh, they're a lot more low maintenance, so you don't have gardens and and uh, obviously large green space that you need to uh, maintain. Uh, if it's under a strata scheme or a body corporate, uh, then obviously things like insurance, maintenance and upkeep are, are provided by the body corporate themselves. Um, Pre-construction prices may be available, so if you're looking at a new one, um, you can lock in uh, construction prices. Um, and from an investment point of view, it, it generally it's going to have great facilities for tenants that you're going to rent out to. You know, they'll have things like pools or, or gyms or a barbecue area. Uh, or rooftop terraces, and these are, are really attractive to, to tenants. Um, obviously, you know they want to be able to live close to uh, amenities, close to cities, but you know in places that they can invite friends to um, to, to entertain. And, and it's, having apartments or townhouses with these facilities are going to make it obviously easy for you to, to rent out. Um, and like I touched on, you know if if, if it's in a highly sought after inner city suburb then they're going to be more attractive to tenants. And although you know, body corporate may be a little bit more expensive with such facilities, uh, the rent, you're usually going to build that into the rent anyway. So it's not going to be an issue. Um, so for those units or apartments and townhouses close to the city, they're, going to, they're generally going to offer you higher rental yields and, and obviously uh, security as well, because once it becomes uh, um, uh, vacant, you should be able to rent it out quite quickly. Here's just an example of townhouses. They're generally um, uh, linked to the property next door. The townhouses give me two or three stories. Uh, generally, the ground level will have a, a single garage, uh, and then the living spaces and the laundry and kitchen. And upstairs, are usually you have the bedrooms. This particular one is three bed, two point five bath. Um, it does have a swimming pool. Uh, obviously, a, a shared uh, amongst the complex. Um, and you've got a appraised rent of about 400 to 430 a week for this particular example here. So for those that aren't familiar with this uh, suburb of Calamvale, uh, it's only 18 kilometres from Brisbane, south of Brisbane CBD. Uh, a lot of uh, amenities around there. There's a university close by, a lot of restaurants, good close to schools. Um, this particular one is a new townhouse. It's, um, it will be completed um, in the financial year. Apartments. Uh, and just touching on townhouses again, if you're usually a townhouse will have some green space or a bit of a, a courtyard, whereas apartments won't. Unless you're on the ground floor, sometimes you may have a bit of a courtyard or a bit of a um, some some green space. But usually, if you're on the second or higher levels, you just have a small balcony. Um, and obviously, the you know, but usually both sides of uh, your apartment walls, you'll have you know neighbouring neighbouring uh, people um, there as well. So here's a one bed one study in Yarra. Bilba in, in Queensland. Um, this one's got easy access to the Brisbane and Gold Coast. Um, it's in a great area where it's up and coming in that, um, you know, they, 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 they're currently building a Coles directly across from this, this development. There's a new IGA um, and a Caltex that's already opened. And, um, you know, there's a, a hundred uh, plus 
uh, size and uh, hectares in size, uh, mixed industry and business area that's also been identified within this area. So, um, you know, it's important that you can identify these things because they will obviously help and reduce the risk of no growth in an area. Um, because with you know more jobs, more businesses, industry coming into an area, that's going to create jobs, and then there's going to be demand for housing because people want to live close to to where they're working. So why dual income? So you probably heard this term come up from time to time. Now dual income can apply to those three types of properties, whether it be house, houses, units, townhouses, even. Um, but you know why would you look at dual income? So this is great if, for those looking at cash flow. Um, you know, you've got two income streams essentially coming in on one title, so it's going to help increase your serviceability and usually you're going to have only one set of expenses going out. So, you know, one rates, one water, um, and you only need um, uh, insurance as well. Um, it's going to reduce your exposure to a risk of vacancy. So if one uh, tenant decides not to uh, renew and you've got one side vacant, then usually you'll, you'll have the other side still at least bringing in some income. If you've got duplexes, um, these potentially can be subdivided, so you can actually then create two separate titles from that one lot, and then you could decide to sell that one off if you wanted to. And then the the uh, the, the profits from that sale, you can then pay off the one that you've decided to keep. So that may allow you to, uh, to, to reduce your debt you know, within a short period of time. Um, you can capitalize on higher rates of depreciation. So again, if it's a newer property, you're gonna be able to get more depreciation. Um, perhaps uh, an even uh, a greater benefit for those that are looking for their first property to live in, uh, you've got the option to live in one and then rent out the other. So it's gonna help pay down your mortgage. So a couple of benefits there, there's obviously a lot more as well, but they're, they're, they're the key for dual income. And here's an example of one, uh, of, of a house. Um, so you can see that uh, there's two garages there. It looks like it's actually one house, but if you look at that floor plan there, um, that's just an example you, of, of it reversed though. You can see that generally that you'll be able to access um, the actual dwelling from the garage itself. Um, if not, there'll be a separate um, access. So uh, the two tenants should never ever cross paths unless they're pulling up the driveway at the same time. Um, and they'll have their own um, alfresco spaces or outdoor entertainment areas as well where they shouldn't be able to, to see each other. So you can see this particular example here, um, you know, you've got a total price of 565 for the whole property, but with both rents taken into consideration of between 600 to 620 a week, you know, you've got about 5.5% gross yield there uh, for, for, for a dual income property. So what I wanna do now is just introduce you to the premium membership. So this is where a real estate investor could potentially help you. You know, with some of the people that have indicated some of the challenges of you know finding that the you know the right property, or you know they're having problems with finance or or the time it takes. You know, this is where the real estate investor premium membership can really help you uh, get you to that next property. And this membership's all about it's for the hands-off investor. So it's just an easy way to help you purchase your next investment property. Um, and it will suit first-time investors, it will suit existing investors. So especially those, you know, you've got a bit of a portfolio already, you, 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 you don't have time, you're still working, uh, this could be a great option for you to, to help you find your next deal. And we'll provide you with a, essentially a six-step strategic approach. You know, we provide a free consultation, there's no obligation, we'll assess your current position, We'll review your finance and your structures, how many properties you have at the moment, what's your debt like, and usually that will only take about 20 to 30 minutes, and, and we'll have one of our specialist uh, senior uh, property consultants to actually um, contact you um, over the phone at a time that suits, just to go over those those things and work out, okay, what, 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 are, the, what are the goals that you've got in place already, uh, what are the steps that you've, you've built out, or, or we can even help you build out your, your plan. And that's what we're all about. If you proceed, we then we'll actually then deliver to you a property acquisition plan, and we'll detail exactly what we're planning on on helping you you do to be able to achieve where you want to be over the next 10, 15, 20 years. More importantly, then, based off that property acquisition plan, we'll then understand exactly what your financial requirements are, uh, where you where you're currently sitting, what's your borrowing capacity, and we'll then we'll then actually do all the research and due diligence for you. So we've got you know, a lot of experience, we've done this for a lot of clients over the, over the years. Um, we'll be able to then actually present you deals that meet your criteria. And you don't have to you know, accept the first one that we present, we'll continue to find you and present you a deal until you're happy with the property and the area that we presented. 
Um, now, you'll, you'll actually get access to um, our property tools or our pro membership tools for a year. Um, and the, the, the reasoning for that is that anything that we present to you, you've got, we've got we give you full visibility or, or, and, and accountability of, of what we're presenting to you. You can fact check everything that we've done and you can then see why we've, 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 we've decided to choose that for you. At that stage then, you can go through the property acquisition process, so you should be confident you'll know exactly what the maximum price that you should be paying, um, will help you with you know, organising uh, legal if you need to, building and pest depreciation, all that sort of stuff, all that sort of thing, uh, stuff that we can help save you time because we, we, we already have partners in place. And then we can help with the ongoing property review, have a look to see how you're tracking, and then potentially when you can then next do your next deal. So it's all about working together. So we're not just going to present you deals because we've got you know a property that's for sale or we, we know that this is available. We we will only present you deals that will meet your your criteria. You know, is it going to give you the ability to grow your your, your cash flow or increase your serviceability so that you can buy a a, a capital growth potential property um, for your next one. So, you know, some of the, the, the goals that some of our uh, previous members, uh, you know, have indicated is that they just want to boost or, or, you know, replace their income with more passive cash flow, uh, or they just want to generate equity through long-term capital growth. So it's about the long, uh, the long game. So what are some of the advantages? So, you know, we do all the hard work for you. Like I said, we'll actually do all the research. Uh, there is a 100% money back guarantee. So if you can't actually get your finance pre-approval, we'll give you a full refund. Until you get your finance pre-approved, uh, you know obviously we can't start searching property for you, so we're not going to we're not going to take we're not going to keep your money. Leverage off our experience, professional ties and partners. We've got you know networks um, that we we can leverage off to you know ensure that we get you the best investment grade properties that are going to help you um, build your portfolio uh, successfully. Now, if you do uh, settle on an a, um, investment grade op property from one of our partners, you do get a $5,000 cash rebate. So that's a great incentive for those looking at, at a, a new property. We're an ASX listed business. We've been around for a very long time. Uh, we've got exclusive access to stock as well. So uh, look, for premium members, you'll get access to this first before it's actually released to the market. If you're a free or a pro member, you'll be able to get um, access to any stock that's remaining after our premium members that have actually had a look at it. And you do get access to a dedicated portfolio manager as well, where you've got one point of contact where you can uh, uh, go go back to for any questions or queries that you have. So even though this is not a, an educational course, you're gonna learn along the way anyway, based off the conversations that we have with you. Here's a couple of recent purchases that we've um, helped our members with over the last 12 months. Um, I'll just only just go through one, really the Gosford one. This was a great opportunity. Uh, there's a lot happening in the area. So Gosford's in New South Wales. It's about an hour, hour and a bit north uh, of Sydney, depending on traffic time, obviously. It's just north of Newcastle. So this was, this was a new plan, off the plan development, 48 two bedroom apartments, um, and capital growth's been great there. It's been over 7% since it was built last year. It's got water and district views, especially if you're in the higher floors. And the prices started from 435 for our real estate investor members. And for the guys that um, uh, were in the first stage release, they actually got an additional $10,000 off the uh, listing price. And after it went public, uh, the equity went up $30,000 and they were valued at $455. So this was a really, really great um, opportunity. There was a lot happening in the area that we identified. There was a new hospital upgrade happening there. They were bringing in new departments, which meant that there would be new, they would require new doctors, nurses, their families to move up. Um, there was a, there's plans for the ATO department uh, opening up there as well. So obviously I think there's about 100 new jobs that were gonna be there or jobs that were gonna be redirected from, from somewhere else. I think it was Canberra up to, to Gosford and obviously the uh, waterfront redevelopment there um, as well. So from a numbers point of view there, obviously that's all nice, but again, we're all about the numbers, not just about the property and you know that the fact that it's waterfront. So we did the numbers, pre-tax cash flow with this property was positive. Uh, it was just under $2,000 per annum, but uh, your after-tax cash flow, so after depreciation in your uh, tax deductions, uh, you're a bit over $5,500 better off in cash flow. Uh, for the property in year one. So if you're just wondering how much is it, so the premium membership is $4,995. 
and we will help you find your, your next opportunity. But uh, if you keep in mind that if you do end up buying one of our uh, properties that we have um, with one of our partners, we actually pay you to uh, utilize our service because we'll give you a $5,000 rebate. So you'll get access to our tools for 12 months, like I mentioned. We'll help you um, from a finance and professional services point of view, get access to other services that you might need and we'll obviously present you properties that are gonna meet your, your buying and financial criteria. So hopefully that's been useful, gives you an idea on the types of properties that might suit you and your, your strategy and your, your current situation. But look, if I just run a, just launched the last poll of tonight, if you'd like a free call or a consultation, or if you've got any um, specific questions about perhaps any of those opportunities that you've seen, uh, just just um, if you just click uh, yes on the screen and I'll be more than happy to get um, our senior property consultant Mitch uh, or our licensed real estate agent Tim to get in contact just to give you some information. Uh, there's no obligation and we'll be more than happy to see if there's anything that we can do to assist and help you with your property investing journey for 2017.